When you're faced with a crisis, and when you're faced with difficult changes, one of our natural reactions is, if it's painful to make these changes, if it's a painful thing you're facing, is to look for quick fix solutions, is to look somewhere else. Overseas now to Greece, a country on the brink of collapse. The banks closed. ATMs running out of cash. Life savings locked up inside. And no one knows more about that than the Greek Prime Minister, George Papandreou. The Greek economic crisis was uh, very different than the ones I had dealt with in my political life previously, and I had dealt with quite a few crises. I mean, as a young boy, I saw my father being arrested. I had a gun put to my head during the dictatorship. When I became foreign minister, that was during the crisis with Turkey, where we were almost at the brink of war. But the financial crisis was very specific. It was not a Greek crisis. This was a global crisis. But Greece happened to be a, a weak link in the euro system. As 2011 festively dawned across Europe, economists there brooded. For all the celebration, was Europe's financial system about to implode? Greece and Ireland alone were hobbled by more than half a trillion dollars in debt, debt costing more and more to refinance as investors lost faith. As we were seeing day by day that our interest rates and in being able to borrow as a country was, were going off the charts. And what that meant is that we were moving towards bankruptcy. And I could see that a small country like Greece with a GDP smaller uh, than the state of Massachusetts could in fact become the butterfly, the wings of the butterfly that would create the storm around the world. So our slogan was either we change or we sink. And we were sinking. As the crisis was going on, I said, yes, I will take very difficult measures to cut down the deficit and the, and, and, and the, and the debt. Unemployment tops a stunning 26%. At the same time, the deeply indebted Greek government has made dramatic budget cuts, including to health benefits. The swift fall, however necessary, is bringing pain at historic levels. Well, you can imagine that we had come on a progressive party with social democratic values, wanting to help the working person, wanting to strengthen social policies. But of course, when ministers were asked to, instead of moving forward with sort of a positive program, they were asked to cut costs, fire civil servants, cut pensions, cut wages. They were not happy. Politically, this was very, very difficult for them. So 15% deficit, we cut it down to 9% in one year. That's huge cuts. No developed country has done that in the world. The, the, the amazing, actually, initial reaction of the Greek people was, yes, it's painful, but we understand we have to make changes. What happened was Europe was continuing pressuring us for more and more measures, more and more cuts. So even though we had the most massive austerity program uh, initially in 2010, by 2011, there was again new pressure for new measures and new cuts. That was politically very difficult. Why? Because what people felt was okay, we will, we will sacrifice, we will make the sacrifice, and we will even support the government to make the sacrifices. But the people expected that this was a one-off sacrifice. As, as people felt that this was sort of a, an exercise in vain, and there were no solutions, of course people went out into the streets. Well, the crowd is growing by the minute. Uh, there were many more than 10,000 here at the last big demonstration, we expect more than that this evening. If we don't bring in our citizens with us, they will be against what's happening and we will be more polarized and incapacitated in dealing with these major changes. I think what we all try to do is, is, is communicate this as much as possible to the Greek people. We decide together 
what we could do as a country. Do we, do we stay in the euro and make these difficult decisions or do we risk leaving euro and maybe even the European Union if we don't do things well? Nur Rubini says that Greece is basically insolvent. Why the markets aren't convinced that Greece is doing what it needs to get back on track. Even though we were doing all this, the markets were not reassured. And they were not reassured because it was not just a Greek problem. This was a European issue and a global problem too. But in these global problems, if we do not work together, we cannot solve them. So what the markets were saying is, are you going to you know, let Greece uh, deal with its own debt problems alone? Or you, since you're in a common currency, are you going to stand up and say, yes, we are doing whatever it takes? When I went and met with um, my counterparts in the uh, European Union, the initial struggle that I had was to convince my counterparts in Europe that this was not just a Greek problem. That, of course, was very controversial because the narrative that existed was that these lazy Greeks, you know, they have to pay for this. So why are we, why are we lending them? Why are we giving them money? You know, and will we lose this money? It's easy, easy to, to, to go on a path of um, sort of narrow-minded nationalism where you look for your enemies outside rather than seeing how you can co cooperate. Finally, Europe, but belatedly, did work together and created a support mechanism and then there was this troika which would allow for helping us if we could not access the markets which we could not at some point and I had to access the support of our fellow Europeans. We were able to get that finally in Europe and uh, when Draghi came in and he said we will do whatever it takes we're going to calm the markets that helped uh, Europe get out of the crisis and Greece avoid the bankruptcy. Once Europe worked together and showed a strong strength as sort of a, a common sort of front towards these markets saying, uh, you know, I will intervene, what Draghi said, I will intervene into the Italian bonds, into the Spanish bonds, as they were almost going bankrupt also. I will buy bank, I will buy their bonds to cut down the interest rates. Then the markets uh, became much more quiet. Greece has come a long way from the peak of the crisis. But analysts say that the recovery is fragile and Greeks I speak to complain they don't feel an improvement in their lives. The more you involve our citizens, the more informed they will be. The more they have a say and the more they have a responsibility, the more inf they will want to be well informed. And uh, in doing so, you bring out, uh, I think, the best in people. You say, yes, you do have a responsibility, you do have a voice, you have the capacity, and you own the final decision. Power is fleeting. Uh, you need to use it well for the public good, but realize that it could be gone in one moment. Uh, and I think this is a, a lesson we need to, to, to learn. Humanity today has to, and our politicians and our leaders, have to be humble enough to use power in the best of ways. And only that way can we have a just and, and humane society.